following our heart sounds like the right thing to do. It's the Christian way. It's the cultural norm. And it sounds good, right? But the Bible says our hearts are wicked. Jeremiah 17, 9 says the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? So in today's video, I want to explore how to tangibly know what it means to follow our hearts and when not to follow our heart so that we can navigate life with wisdom and purpose confidently. My name is Kristen Kahns. I'm a nutrition therapist and natural food chef and neurostrategist. I help to teach women how to feel their best so they can step out in the fullness of who they've been created to be. So it would mean so much to me if you could like and subscribe to help get this content out and comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic. So let's unpack this for a minute because this perspective, perspective shift alone can be life changing. So when people say, follow your heart, what does that even mean? In the natural, it usually means follow your gut feeling. Well, our feelings can oftentimes greatly mislead us. But how do we know this? We can't have a feeling without first having a thought. It's impossible. Our thoughts always create our feelings. And the reason this doesn't seem true, you might be saying, no, Kristen, this isn't true, is because 85 to 95% of our thoughts are on autopilot because they're coming from our subconscious mind. So what happens if we're not taking our thoughts captive? We're allowing these negative thoughts to get programmed into our subconscious mind. And when we've accepted these negative thoughts or these um, wrong beliefs, it's then generating the feeling. And then we say, well, I'm just going to follow my heart. Or even worse, a lot of Christians are saying, um, well, God told me this, basically meaning the same thing. They're following their heart or it's what they're feeling. And then they get themselves into a mess. And then the results of following their heart is either A, they are getting mad at God, or B, they just believe they don't hear from God at all, that they heard wrong. So do you see how this could be a problem? In the Bible, the heart and the mind are the same exact thing. So leb is the Hebrew word for heart, for mind, for the inner man. And in the spirit, mind and heart are exactly the same. So the heart stands for our inner being of man. And it's the fountain of all we do. So our thoughts, our desires, our words, and our actions. So that's why Proverbs 4.23 says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. We have to guard our mind and we have to take our thoughts captive. So when we're trying to make a decision or move forward in what we feel the Lord is calling us to do, how do we know if it's right? We're often just told, follow your heart. So let me give you an example and I'll give you kind of two scenarios and I'm oversimplifying things to make a point, but let's just say that we feel the Lord is calling us to a specific um, opportunity or to start our own business. So scenario number one, we sit down and think, I can't start a business. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to do that. And you're feeling scared or you're feeling anxiety or overwhelmed because you don't know how to start your own business. And you feel, well, I should have peace in order to move forward. So maybe this just isn't the right thing for me to do. So we decide to not move forward, even though the opportunity lines up with our giftings and our calling. So our feeling is saying, I feel scared. I feel overwhelmed. And when I'm thinking, it, we're feeling that when we're thinking, I don't know what I'm doing. All right. So what happens in scenario number two, if we 
change our feeling to, um, to confident or excited instead of scared and overwhelmed. Then all of a sudden, this opportunity feels like a great idea. My heart is saying, go for it. So which one is it? What do we do? The first thing we have to do is take our thoughts captive to become aware of what's driving us and what feelings are being created through our thoughts. So you have to think, is this thought fueling me to move forward in my life or is it keeping me stuck? You can pray through this and ask God to highlight patterns of maybe not moving forward in the past because of overwhelm or if you've identified honestly that this just really isn't the right time for this just be sure that you like the reason and that you're fully aware of why you're making that choice because our subconscious thoughts feel very true to us they can honestly be just really sneaky because it's a program that we are operating out of and we're going against this program, um, it makes us very uncomfortable. So we naturally shy away from interrupting the program because it feels uncomfortable. It feels wrong because it's out of the norm. It's in that subconscious mind. So we need to look um, also at the big picture. And remember, decisions are not just about us, about what we want to do or what we feel like doing. We often get so distracted in our own lives and we lose focus on how the Lord um, has called us to love and serve others. What if moving forward in um, that opportunity or starting that business or getting healthy is going to inspire someone else to do the same? You have to ask yourself, does this opportunity help me to move forward? Is it helping me to grow and to become? And will this affect the lives of other people? So the story that we tell ourselves drives our destiny. And our story is our thoughts and our beliefs. And when your beliefs are, um, our beliefs are powerful agreements that authorize what you experience. So I believe the greatest discovery that you will ever make is the moment when you realize that God gave you the power and authority and responsibility to be the author of your own story. So next time you have a decision to make, don't follow your feelings. Remember your heart and your mind are the same thing and taking your thoughts captive is what will guide you in wisdom and purpose. Question your feelings and ask yourself, what thought is driving me to feel this way? And is this thought serving me? Do I want to accept this thought into my life? That is how you take your thoughts captive. And then ask yourself, am I making this all about me? Or does the Lord want to use me in a way to impact someone else? And it's not about us having an audience or being an influencer or anything like that. You never know just how stepping up and showing up um, in your authentic self can impact someone else to do the same without you even knowing it. So if you like this content, press that like button and subscribe to get weekly updates of new videos that are posted and comment below. I really want to know um, what you all think about this and your thoughts. So I'll see you guys next week.